A blessed Tuesday afternoon to you and, and welcome to another edition of uh, our Tuesday Reflections. It is February 2nd, 2021. My name is Pastor Tim and uh, so glad that you can you can be with, with me here today. It's a beautiful day out here. It's kind of cold and snowy, but uh, just the sun's out for the first time in a little while and I couldn't resist. Once again, you know how I like the sun and I thought I'd come out uh, today for our, for our time together. But I was thinking about a particular uh, word that has come to mind the last few days and kind of strange maybe that it would come to my mind and you'll know what I mean when I share with you what that word is. The word is contentment, contentment. Let me ask you today, what comes to your mind when you think of contentment? 2020? Most likely not. But I was thinking, you know, what, what might bring us contentment? Well, I imagine sitting on a beach someplace, again with the sun shining and it might be 80 degrees or mid 80s and a cool breeze coming off the ocean and and sitting in a comfortable chair uh, maybe if you enjoy it your your feet are in the in the tide of the ocean as the waves wash up and uh, smell of ocean salt in the air you've got an umbrella drink in your hand and and it might be even one of those all-inclusive places where people are there to serve you all the time and ask you if there's anything else that you need. But that might be a place that brings contentment or a situation that brings contentment. Or maybe you're not a beach person. Maybe you're a mountain in the woods kind of person and, and you're, you imagine an off-grid cabin someplace and there's a fire in the fireplace or maybe you're outside at the fire pit and you're just relaxing, listening to the sounds of the woods and looking at the beauty around you, uh, maybe reading a good book along the way, but you're able to stop and take a deep breath. That might be contentment. Or maybe it's been a long day. It's been a long day and things haven't always gone the way you wanted them to during the day, which is the way most days work. But it's been a long day and, and you, you finally get the kids into bed and they're actually sleeping. They actually fall asleep right away. And, and so you're wondering, wow, there's some quiet time here. Should I read a book? Should I watch a little TV? Maybe just take advantage of this and just go to bed. Or maybe you've just paid off your mortgage. Or maybe you've just paid off your car. Or maybe paid off a credit card. And you're able to take a deep breath because there's just this freeing feeling about that. It feels good. A sense of contentment. Maybe one of those fit your idea of contentment. Maybe they all do in some way, shape, or form. But contentment's a pretty important piece to our life in a very real way. We are content, you see, I think if we were to list examples or, or um, pieces to our contentment, what makes us content, we might say, you know, we are content when the pressure is off a bit. Maybe when a project is done, when we know that everything is going to be okay, when we have no complaints about everything, or anything, or when everything fits, you know, feng shui, or maybe it's knowing that we're safe and secure and comfortable and at peace. Well, you know, scripture has a lot to say about contentment and what it means to be content and what it takes to be content. And I'd like to just share a few passage of scripture from scripture for you and I'll go relatively slow. So if you'd like to look it up as we go along or just jot down the scripture references and then you can look at them a little bit later at your own leisure. But Proverbs chapter 15 verse 16 says this, Better is a little with the fear of the Lord 
than great treasure with trouble. Isn't that the truth? Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Luke chapter 3 verse 14. Likewise, the soldiers asked him, saying, And what shall we do? They're asking Jesus. So he said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely, and be content with your wages. Jesus was talking to Roman soldiers who, who had answered, were asking the question, What should we do you know, to follow you? What are the things that we need to be about, Lord? 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 24. Brothers and sisters, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called, being with the Lord and in the Lord. John chapter 15 uses the word to abide in and dwell in and remain in the Lord, a state of contentment. We've talked about what it means to abide before. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. How true is that? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The message there being Jesus told the disciples and tells all of us, he's never going to leave us or forsake us. So in whatever we have, we, are, we need to be content with what we have. Because in having him and in him having us, there is no greater gift that we can possibly have. And of course in Philippians, Paul's letter to the Philippians, the fourth chapter, the 11th verse, Paul says, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever circumstance, in whatever state I am in, to be content. He says that he's had times when he's had plenty, more than enough. He's had times when he's had nothing, nothing at all. And in every situation, he is content because he is in Christ Jesus, and Christ Jesus is in him. How about another few verses as well that describe this? Proverbs again, chapter 17, verse 1. Better is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 6. Better a handful with quietness than both hands full together with toil and grasping for the wind. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. And the gift of a quiet life. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, and this is a good one. For kings and our leaders and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. And finally, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious, very precious in the sight of God. Contentment. Right, and we can even we could even take that further to talk about contentment as the fruits of the spirit: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, gentleness, loving kindness. All of that leads to contentment 
regardless of our situations. The one last verse I share is one you well know, Psalm 46, verse 10. God says, in the midst of everything going on around us, be still, be still and know that I am God. See, friends, the, the grace of God leads us to the gift of contentment. Contentment in our hearts and our lives, no matter what is going on around us, no matter what is happening to us, no matter what is happening in us, the Lord is in charge. He has you in his loving arms now and always. And for that, we give him the thanks and praise of everything that we have. Thanks for tuning in. May God bless you richly this day and every day. May God use you to be a blessing as well. See you next time.